outside of Idabel, Oklahoma, and we're looking at the timber industry today in Oklahoma. And joining me is Ron Duramus with Warehouser, and you are the harvesting manager. Thank you for joining us today. We're excited to be here. This is a beautiful forest. How old is this forest? This, this forest is 28 years old. And we, and we talk about it being a forest, but really it's almost like a crop, correct? It is, it's like row crops. From, from about 28 years of age to 30 years of age is our process where we try to target a plantation to be har harvested. Okay. And the first process it was it, it step, steps in planting. And I said from that part on, then we, we get with uh, uh, harvesting contractors that we have. And, and then the tracks laid light, out, we cover the specs with the BMPs. And, and BMP being? Best management practices okay. for, for the site. Mm -hmm. And then then uh, they start the harvest process. Okay, and so you have several tracks, obviously, tracks of land that we're talking about. And so you actually will harvest a whole track. It might look like clear, clear cutting, but you are specifically harvesting a field of lumber, basically. True. So when you go through the harvesting, what are some of the equipment that you use and how do they come in here and, and take this lumber out to harvest it? Uh, the first first piece of equipment is a uh, fellow buncher. And what, what it does, it's a rubber tarred rig. We also have some on tracks, but mainly rubber tarred rigged here. It has a, a disc saw on it and they just drive up and cut the tree and put them in piles. And then the next process is the skidding process. Uh, and they'll skid it up to the roadside where it'll be delimbed and processed into the stem. Uh, for various, if it's lumber or, or if it's uh, fi fiber. Okay, and it's, so, it's kind of majestic to see these big trees. They're just kind of balancing on these tractors as they go to, to the pile to be stripped of their limbs and stuff. They can handle them just like ma match stems. And, and, it's amazing. And the lumber industry has gotten more efficient with how they use each uh, tree, correct? I mean, they're using every last piece of it almost. Every, every piece of the stem is, is used except for the limbs and, and the debris that comes off the limbs. Okay, and then the trucks roll in and, and they load the those trucks up? The ro trucks roll in. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they have uh, onboard scales so they can only carry up to 85,000 um, and they'll transport it to uh, one of the five facilities that we transport to here in McCurtain County. Okay, and can you talk about some of your best practices as far as um, you know running equipment if it's been raining or compaction of the soil and, and that sort of stuff? The contractor uh, is allowed is allowed uh, five percent of the track for soil disturbance, and beyond that, then it's in violation. So. Uh, if it's on steep, steeper terrain, uh, after they get through, they'll put in some water bars. Mm -hmm. If it has a SMZ, which is a stream management zone in it, they'll protect it and allow 50 to 100 foot boundaries from the stream for what water quality. So you're very conscious of what's around the, the crop that you're harvesting and making sure not to pollute or anything like that. Yes. That, that's yes. important. SFI st standards is what, what we have to, Ad, adhere to. Okay, that's your form of accreditation for your for our, for, for our, our har harvesting, yes. Okay, excellent. In Oklahoma, we have 12 million acres of forested land. That's about 28% of Oklahoma's land mass. The majority of that 95% or more is not owned by the government or large timber production companies, but by private individual landowners. The forest industry contributes 2.8 billion to our state's economy and numerous ecological services. Weyerhaeuser primarily uses the native loblolly pine. After the timber's been harvested, the next thing is to get the land ready to be planted. And joining me now is Cody Woolley, and you are a silviculture forester for Warehouser. That's correct. And it's your job to get the land ready to be planted. Yes. So is this land ready to be planted? Can you kind of tell me what that process is? <clears throat> it is. We, uh, a few weeks ago, we come in here and we have a, a D8 dozer with a ripper on the back of it. And uh, we made one pass every 20 feet. And what it does is it, it kind of breaks the soil loose and kind of creates this uh, little furrow right here. Um, and and that'll kind of fill back in as it rains. Mm -hmm. And then in this winter, when the trees are dormant, we'll come back and we'll plant trees. 
in each one of these rows. Okay, so right now in the summertime, you're going through and you're ripping these furrows in the land, but you won't plant until winter time. That's correct, that's correct. Um, we have to leave some time for the, the dirt to kind of silt back in and, and mm -hmm. take place, and, and that creates the ideal planting spot for the tree. So how far, how deep do you rip? It's basically like creating a seed furrow, if you will. That's right, that's right. It, uh, um, we, we, our specs say 18 inches. Okay. And then, and then what size trees are we planting back in there? Oh, they're, they're pretty small. They're about 10 to 12 inches. Okay. And how far apart are we planting? Uh, um, the width is 20 feet. So between rows right, is 20 Right, between feet. rows is 20 feet and the width between trees is five. Okay, and, th and these rows aren't straight. They're based off of the contour That's, of the land? Yes, you'll follow, they follow the, our, our operators will follow the topography. Okay. And that allows for the water when it rains to run down the hill and fall in that furrow. So and, that helps those, and it helps those trees. Get established. Um, yes, okay. during the drought period, it's real, uh, real important that we have that. So we have a, a, a large track of land here, but it doesn't necessarily look like a set square plot that's been harvested. How we do try you to, determine the the track? Well, we try to mimic um, a natural disturbance, mm -hmm. like such as a fire or a, a tornado or something to the, along that lines, and and it kind of doesn't doesn't have uh, square edges to it and so it kind of gives it that natural look. Okay, excellent. And that, that also is real important for wildlife because wildlife will come out here into this area and, and feed on on the new growth that's coming up and then they'll go to the neighboring stand and uh, for cover and, and protection. So you're actually increasing the amount of forest prairie uh, interface there for them to come and, and find food that's and right. stuff. Interesting, very good to know. So I've noticed there's not a large number of cut stumps around here. Was that a part of the harvesting process that they have to cut at a certain level? Well, we have uh, specs that, that our harvesting contractors have to meet for a stump height specs. Oh, okay. And so there's still a, a bunch of stumps around if you get to looking, but you just don't hardly see them because they're cut so close to the ground. We, we like for our contractors to get six inches um, above the ground is our, our height requirement. Okay, and that makes for better cleanup and a cleaner well, land it, when you're Yeah, and it makes it easier for our other contractors to be able to site prep over those stumps and around those stumps. So after we have the forest ready to be planted, Kelly Kemp, who is a silviculture forester for Weyerhaeuser, you come in and you're responsible for the planting of the new the new crop. Yes, ma'am. Can you kind of tell us about this, the spacing, the pruning that you have to do? Okay, uh, what we do is after it's been site prepped, we come in and plant. And our planting season is usually December through about the end of March. Okay. And uh, this track right here, this stand here, is about four years old. So about four years ago, we went through the process of harvesting and ripping. We ripped this on a 20-foot spacing. And you can see that we got pine trees every five feet in that 20-foot row. Now you don't let all those mature. You're probably going to lose a few here and there, or do you thin we, them out? We do. We'll we'll lose a few. Right here's a, a spot where one died. Okay. But we still got one on each side. And uh, what we'll do is, in about when these trees reach about 13 or 14 years old, we'll come in here and thin. Okay. And right now we've got it planted to about 435 trees per acre. We'll thin down to about 120 trees per acre. And do you make use of those that you thin out? We do. We send those to the pulp mill and they make paper out of those. Okay, all right. And yeah. so then after, do you have to do any pruning in that process to grow them into mature lumber? We select stands to prune after they've been thinned. Uh, we'll go in and, and evaluate each stand and see if it's uh, suitable for high quality saw timber. If it is, we'll prune it up to 21 feet. And so does that reduce the number of knots that might be in your timber? Or it, it reduces the knots in the board. And what a knot in a board does is it downgrades the grade of the board. Okay. And, it, and a board is worth less, it has more knots in it. So when we prune, that tree grows clear wood instead of knotty wood, and we get higher grade lumber from okay. that. All right, and what about competition with other uh, trees that might be coming up, some of your shade trees, your deciduous trees? This, this particular stand here, uh, we did a herbicide treatment when it was about two years old, and the target was the woody competition. As you can see, there's still, we didn't completely eliminate all the competition. There's mm -hmm. still a mixture of different types of competition, but 
it's not competing with the pine. See how the pine are up taller mm -hmm. than, than the brush? That's what we were after. So you so, just do it enough to give the pines a chance to get a head start. We call it a release treatment. It releases the pines to grow above the competition. Now, so, you mentioned the process of planting these trees. Mm -hmm. Is that a mechanical process or? All these trees are hand planted. So every one of these trees have been touched by hand. <laughs> every one of these trees have been touched by hand, pulled out of a planting bag and stuck in a hole in the ground. And then you just rely on the uh, the furrows that you've created to water and the natural rainfall that you receive? Correct, correct. We don't do any artificial watering of this track. So it, it sounds very sustainable, the cycle that you have for harvesting lumber. It is. We have uh, our tree farm divided into stands and we know how many acres we can harvest each year and do this in, con in a continual rotation from now on. So you have several tracks. Do you ever harvest a track that's right next to one another so there's a big area or do you try to diversify where you're harvesting? We, we lay these settings out where there's a mosaic and we don't harvest two tracks side by side. We wait uh, either three years or wait till they get five feet tall before okay. we harvest next to it. Okay, so, and so you've done this and this will be growing for the next 20 some years. It will, this, we'll grow this track for about another 10 years and then thin it and then grow it for about another 10 after that and come in and final harvest and start the whole process all over again. Excellent, thank you for so, sharing with us. You bet, we appreciate y'all coming. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.